Let's just start with APs. What can you tell me about an arithmetic progression? There's an A and D. There's an A and D. Okay, so these pronumerals, they stand for some stuff, right? What do they stand for? Okay, so if we have an A first term, that's good, and D difference, a common difference is an even better way to say it, common difference. Okay, good, we'll come to the end term in a second, let's just make sure we understand this. You, you start somewhere, right, you start at some number, and then to go to each subsequent number, you add on or you subtract something, right, and it's, it's the same every time, right, so we could say, uh, you know, 1, 4, 7, 10, 13, right? I'm going to start at 1. If I add 3 every time, maybe I'll even write down those numbers, right? 1, 4, 7, 10, so on, right? So this is an arithmetic progression. Now, we, we might want to know, I think it was Tavar who said, what the nth term is. Like, I, I don't want to have to count up to like the 11th or, or 100th term. I want to be able to go there directly. So we would say t for term, the nth term. Um, we have a formula actually for going there Directly, yeah, go ahead, Tava. A um, bracket n minus 1. A plus. a plus n minus 1. And then times d. Fantastic, okay, very good. So the whole idea here is, if you want to know, say, the first term, you just have a plus no lots of the difference. So 1 take away 1 times the difference, right? But then if you're like, I want the 100th term, you'll start with that first term still, and then you'll add 99 lots of the common difference, because you had to go along 99 steps. Okay, so that's the nth term. Um, there's another formula to do with n, but it's not a term. Is anyone remember? Think. This is series and sequences, remember? Okay, mm, have a think, have a think. If you had a bunch of these and you added them up, right, that's what we call a, that's a series, right? So this is a sequence, but if I were to say 1 plus 4 plus 7 plus 10, that's an S for series or sum, right? Ah, okay, so what we did was, you remember this trick, right? We um, take this sequence here, and we kind of double it, and we can match up your first and your last one, your second and your second last, third and your third last. So we do get n on 2, right, because we take all of them, we pair them up, and then what do we multiply by? Hmm, there's some, um, there's some big brackets in here. 2a <laughs> plus n minus 1d. Okay, let's have a think about that for a second. What's going on in there? Um, inside here, there's two things put together, right? And I just mentioned them. You've got your first term, which we know is A, and then you've got your last term. Well, Justin, you can see. You've got your last term, which we already know is this, right? So if you have your first term A and your last term this, when you add them together, you get, do you see what you get in the brackets there? In fact, I might even write that down. That's the first and last term. You add them up, and every other pairing as you go in towards the middle will add up to the same thing. So we divide by two because we've got, we've got them paired. They're all doubled up, okay? Is there anything else you know about APs? Um, hmm. You can use simultaneous equations. We'll, we'll use simultaneous equations if we're working out, like, oh, you know um, one of these, but um, one of these, but not the rest of it, okay? I want you to think, I gave you an AP before. What if I gave you a sequence and you didn't know whether it was an AP? How would you be able to, like, determine whether it was or wasn't? What would you do? Have a think. If I, if I gave you, well, let's just have a look at this one, right? I mean, I told you it is, but how would you prove to someone this is definitely an AP, just not just look at the numbers? Yes, right? That's if one of those numbers at the end, so if 7 is the end, you would put, or you would put A, the first two, so 1 as, one equals to, uh, A equals to 1. Okay, and the A equals 1. And would be 4 minus 1. Okay, so we need to have a look at these two terms here, right, to find the difference. So I guess using the language we've just developed, we'd have to say 4 minus 1 is the second term, take away the first term, right? And if this really is an AP, then every time I do that difference, it should be common, right? So that should be equal to, for instance, term three, take away term two, or, or any of the other ones, right? Um, but this, we usually only get three terms, that establishes the sequence, uh, and then we just see if the pattern fits, okay? So this is how we verify that you have an AP. Okay, let's think about if we can do all of this in parallel. For a GP, we still start with an A, first term, so I'll write that down, but we don't have a common difference anymore. What do we have? It's a common, hmm, do we remember what GPs are? Bless you. 
have a think. We're not, we're not adding stuff. What's the other operation we could use? Hmm. I mean, a common difference could also be subtracting. So this could be adding and subtracting, right? It's not plus, it's not minus, it's going to be multiplication, right? So we call this R for a common ratio. Does that ring a bell? <laughs> I promise you have, even if the memory is not there. Um, so if you've got a first time you start with something and you multiply over and over and over again, um, can someone else give me, just make up a geometric progression? Let's start at a different number. Let's start at, say, 3. Six. 6. OK, so it looks like the ratio here is I am doubling. Yeah. So what should the next one be? 12. And then if I wanted to keep going, not that I need to, but it would be 24 next, and then so on. OK, uh, so let's keep on using this same knowledge we've delved here. What's the nth term? I'm not going to be adding stuff on, like in an AP. I'm going to be multiplying, right? So if I start with the first term, then what do I do to get to the nth term along? So I'm going to multiply. I'm definitely going to multiply by the common ratio, but how many times will I multiply by the common ratio? n minus 1. n minus 1, just like here, right? You can have a thing. Just have a look at an example here. This is term 4, right? Term 4. You start at the first term. You multiply once, and then twice, and then a third time. And then you're on term 4. So this is 4 minus 1 would give you r to the power of 3, OK? What about the sum? This one's a bit trickier. Hmm. And I'll give you a tip. It's a fraction. Does that ring any bells? It's on, it's on the reference sheet, so if you cannot remember, right, you at least can sort of lean on that. But I wonder if anyone does. Is it? I'll give you a start. <laughs> it starts with A. Uh, can you take us? R to the N. I'm totally not reading anything off my page. 1 minus R to the N, and that means on the denominator. Can anyone finish it off? There's going to be a 1 minus R. Um, this is not the only way we can write this, by the way. <laughs> Another way of writing the nth sum. Times, um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna write it. You can read yourself. That's fine. Okay. Now, okay. So we've got these two different ways to write the sum of the first n terms of a GP. Uh, why do we have two? Like we don't have two for this one. Why do we have two different forms for it? What's the point? Hmm. They, they both will give you the same answer every single time. Why do we Why do we have two? Um, what was our um, What was our con Oh yeah, no shame, by yeah, we're trying to avoid negatives. We, we hate negatives, which is very discriminatory, but they just are a place for errors to come up. So let's have a think about the common ratio in this example, right? What was the common ratio again? Two. It was 2. So if I popped r equals 2 into this one, right? I promise we'll get the right answer for either of these, but what would happen? You're going to have 1 minus 2 on the denominator. Negative, yeah? And you're going to have 1 minus 2 to the power of some stuff. This is also going to be negative. So you just have a double negative, and it's going to cancel out. Wouldn't it be better if we just had something which didn't have the negatives to begin with? So 2 minus 1 gives you 1. Really easy. OK. Hmm. Now, there's a sneaky thing. And I'm going to give you another example down here. right? There's a sneaky thing that GPs do, I wonder if you remember, that APs cannot do, which is that if you had a sequence like, say, this, here is another GP. OK. Um, common ratio here is not, it's not doubling, it's halving this term, right? What's interesting about this guy is, if you went forever, right, there's this sort of um, number that you can never get bigger than. Like, no matter, you could have 100 terms, or 1,000 terms, or a million terms, and you can never get past that number. You can never get bigger than that, right? Does anyone remember what that's called? It starts with an L. There's a, there's a limit to the size of this, right? So we call it not just a sum, but a limiting sum. And we don't write it with an n because we're kind of like, this is just, don't worry about 100 or 1,000 terms. What if you took all the terms? Okay. Now, this is going to be based on, what's a good color to use? It's going to be based on this guy up here. It looks very, very similar. Does anyone remember how we take this guy and turn it into the limiting sum? Anyone have a think? It's still a fraction. Hmm. If you've got a a ratio that's small, like I say a half, right? Uh, what happens to this guy up here? Have a look in the numerator. What happens to this guy here if you get really, really big values of n? Right? If you have half and then you multiply it by itself like a hundred times or a thousand times, or a million, it gets really small, right? 
it, it goes smaller and smaller, like these numbers get smaller. Right, so this guy right here, that r to the end, it approaches zero. So if this approaches zero, what is one minus that approach? One. Just approaches one. So you just get left with that a on the top, a times one, it's just gonna give you a, um, and then everything else is the same. So this guy here is what we call the limiting sum. Uh, you only get it when your ratio is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So the way we would say it is if your, um, sorry, not your ratio, if your successive terms are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So the way we would say that is if your ratio is between negative one and one, okay? Now, so why is it yeah. Oh, you, are you talking about this guy here? Yeah, you could write it as an absolute value. I actually, I was, like, are you asking why do they have an absolute value? I was deliberately avoiding that um, because we don't need to worry about that language there because um, this is saying the same thing as this. If I take the absolute value, I don't care whether it's negative or positive, so long as it's small enough, if that makes sense. So um, a common ratio of negative a half would have worked just fine as well. Now, I know that's a lot to take in, but that was a whole topic. Like, that's, that's a whole topic, okay? So, to get us back in the frame of mind before we really dig into um, all that finance stuff, um, we're going to have a look at this exercise, which will get us back into, like, what's an AP again? What's a GP? Just to get the gears turning again, and then we'll really dive deep into all these special financial ideas.